sing with us this morning. church. What a joy to see you all. Good morning, Pam. Good morning. How good, are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm here. There you, that's, that's good because you're scheduled to preach this morning. I, I pulled up and didn't see Kenny's car and I was like, oh, is Kenny off today? Thank goodness you're here. I'm here. We came in Mason's car today, but I'm glad you're here. I, as a matter of fact, I was getting ready to send you an email and say, would you just send your sermon and I'll do it. And it's just one of those, I'm just going to talk. So you just had to make it up. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you know, as a Pentecostal preacher, we got pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was a lot of scary stuff in it, but we throw it out there, you know, just see what It's landed. good to see you all today. It is. It's good to he, see. He and I will banter back and forth. <laughs> and it's good to see everybody who's tuned in online with us. We want to make a few quick announcements. Our midweek meetup continues, and we will meet up this Wednesday night, even though it's the day before Thanksgiving. We do plan to meet up this Wednesday night. And then on December December 3rd, we're going to have a special Wednesday night meetup. For those of you who are really dealing with grief this season, it's been a year and a half or two years. Enid's father is um, a retired funeral home director and he has run grief sessions and he's going to get on and just talk about some tips for how to make it through the holidays. So be sure and tune into that. You might need know someone who needs it. You know, spread the word. Yeah, December 3rd? Mm -hmm. That's what it is? Super. Thank you for telling us about that. Cafe Seenagers continue to meet. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it works, so Jeff, fill us in. Uh, second Saturday in December. Super. Online second or in Saturday person or both? December. In person. In Wonderful. person. So for more information, you can shoot Jeff an email at jeffminister at uh, gmail.com. We are wrapping up, finishing up our uh, giving and our stewardship series uh, today. Rooted in love. Rooted in love. Yeah. Your sermon last week was incredible. Thank you. I appreciate that. It reminded uh, me of who we want to be. Exactly. We want to be that church. We want to be, if we can be anything, that's who we want to be. Uh, I want to go ahead and mention now a part of being that church and being those people. Uh, Rita Swan is with us this morning, and she is going to be selling the chocolate and the coffee and the toilet paper. And I think I may have saw another item or two back there. Rita, uh, tell us about that. Um, well, I do sell various fair trade products, and uh, the advantages of fair trade are tremendous for the small farmers of the global south. The uh, fair trade is a movement sponsored by the churches largely, Protestant churches and Catholic churches. Uh, they buy directly from the small farmers, eliminating the middlemen who generally control weighing the product and transportation and the price that you get. So uh, the farmers get a much better price, probably twice as much as they would get outside of fair trade. Um, and uh, there are high standards of for protection of the environment, uh, prohibiting exploitive child labor. Uh, the farmers have to be in a co-op that is democratically run, and uh, they get to decide how the money is used. Um, they, um, 
fair trade guarantees them a price uh, long before the harvest so that they can get credit to buy supplies. Uh, they, and um, the price is always at least the world production price and usually much higher. Um, I also have coffee from Congo, uh, which is um, dedicated to the Ponzi Hospital in Congo. Dr. Dennis Mukwego won the Nobel Peace Prize for his work at that hospital um, treating victims of rape, which has been a widespread weapon of war in the Congo Civil War, uh, which is actually considered Africa's first world war. It's had millions of casualties and proxy countries coming in because they want to get, our co get their cobalt, <laughs> which we use in our cell phones and these wonderful electric cars that are gonna come on. <laughs> um, so it's very sad. And um, a dollar from each sack of the uh, Congo coffee goes to directly to this hospital. Fairtrade has donated over $100,000 to the hospital. Um, I have the bamboo toilet paper, only nine rolls left today, but uh, you're welcome to buy them at a dollar a roll. And um, chocolate, organic chocolate from the, the, the cacao is from the Dominican Republic and um, the sugars from Paraguay and uh, lots of help for the farmers there. So would appreciate your support for these delicious products. Thank you, Rita. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work you do, the awareness that you raise, and for always reminding us how important this is. So those are available in the Fellowship Hall after church. So stop by and get those. And Rita, if you'll put back a handful of those chocolate bars for me, I'd appreciate it. They get bought up before I get back there. Um, <laughs> that's a preacher's prerogative. <laughs> right. I've already put hot chocolate on Oh, me. there you go. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Rita, for all of that. And then we want to let everybody know that next week, believe it or not, it's Advent season. Can you believe it's it? It's just hard to believe. And so next week we start a new series called The Inn, Housing the Holy. And we've spent some time uh, going through this series. It's actually a beautiful Marsha McPhee worship series. And we've sort of adapted it to uh, work well with us. And so we want to invite you starting next week up through uh, the Sunday before Christmas and then go ahead and get on your calendar Sunday, December, I mean, December the 24th. It's not a Sunday. Uh, Christmas Eve, I think it's a Saturday. Friday or Saturday. Friday or Saturday. Because I think Christmas this year is actually on... Saturday. Is it on a Saturday this year? Okay. Uh, so for, you know, this is the first Advent we're going to get to be together in a long time. It is. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about it too, and I'm especially excited about this series. So plan on being with us for the next several Sundays as we move through Advent and, uh, and into Christmas. Deep breath. Thank you, God, for your love and your mercy and the opportunity to be here to worship you. In yes. your name we pray. Amen. Let's wave at one another and let's sing. There are blessings we shall all receive when we know the Spirit's fullness that we leave. We're the ones to profit when we say we are wrong.
join me this morning in our call to worship. We come with hearts ready and longing. For in our longing, we are worshiping. We come with hearts ready to love. For in our loving, we are worshiping. We come with hearts ready to give. For in our giving, we are worshiping. Receive our longing, receive our loving, receive our gifts, O God. For in all these things, we are worshiping. Let's pray. God, who gives every good and perfect gift, we come this morning eager and honored to be in your presence, eager to learn of you, to be inspired and encouraged and even challenged in the moments we spend together today. God, we pray that your spirit would be in this place to prompt us and encourage us and strengthen us and challenge us to be that church to be your people, the people who make a good difference in this world, the people who get into good trouble sometimes, the people who live up to the true expectation of holiness and godliness in a way that makes that good difference in the world. Use these moments in the way that you've sent us here to receive them. We pray in your name. Amen. Please stand with us if you're able for this morning's opening hymn. I was sinking deep in fear, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply drained within, seeking to rise no more. But the maker of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters. a friend of mine, a colleague who's an ordained UUC chaplain who works in a therapeutic foster home um, in Louisville. Come on up, Samantha. She's going to tell you a little bit about her work, and then we're going to have Lori come up and tell you about some work we can do at Bluegrass. Thank you for having me. Thank you for welcoming me. And thank some specific folks who helped to load my car already this morning. Um, as Pam said, I am the chaplain at Bellwood and Brooklawn. Uh, we have residential treatment for children and youth who have experienced trauma, um, who have experienced abuse and neglect, and they live with us, and we are their family. And we rely on churches to help us do that work. Um, I have been there 23 years. Um, I started when I was 12. Um, um, 
And I continue to be amazed by how much support and love and care we get from the congregations around us. So not only do we have our two residential campuses there in Louisville that house about 150 kids, but we have foster care right here in Lexington and um, all the way down to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And um, we also serve families of those children in the community in the seven county area surrounding Louisville. We have addiction recovery services, we have moms who are pregnant and parenting and recovering from addiction that we also care for. This Christmas season, we are hoping to take care of over 700 families. Um, and I already have a nice start stuck in my car um, that we managed to get, I have no idea how many stuffed animals in my little go-go gadget hatchback. So uh, thank you. In addition to my greetings, which I bring you on behalf of the kids and the staff and the families that we serve, I have a short uh, video from Abby Drain, our president and CEO, who could not be here, but wanted to bring blessing and greeting. Hi, I'm Abby Drain, president and CEO of Bellwood and Brooklawn, and also Seven County Services. And a big prideful hello to Bluegrass United Church of Christ. Uh, I wanted to send this personal message to you in the congregation and, and wear my colors that I'm, that I'm personally so proud of. And I just want to give you a little update on how the kids are doing. Uh, we've been making it through the last year and a half of COVID. It's been a, a struggle, but we've made it and we hope to make it another six months um, and get out of this pandemic that we're in that we thought would have ended a lot sooner. Uh, the kids are doing well. They're looking forward to Thanksgiving and, and the holidays, Christmas and the, and the other holidays and New Year's. But it, it's a great time for them, but also a sad time for them because a lot of them are away from their families and friends, maybe for the first time. And they're working really hard on their recovery, uh, their behavioral health recovery, any, any kind of abuse and neglect that they've been involved in, and just you know maybe changing up foster care homes again and again because they, they couldn't find the right one that fit. And we all know that a large majority of, of kiddos from the LGBTQ community end up being displaced or put out of their homes or not accepted. And they are accepted at Uspiritus. They're, they're accepted here by us at our Bellwood and Brooklawn campuses. And we wrap our loving arms around them and uh, let them know that there are more like them and they're gonna be all right and that they need to you know, focus on themselves and, and growing as human beings. And we're really proud to have Bluegrass United Church of Christ in our midst. I'm hearing a lot about you. I hope I get to come visit you sometime soon. Um, in the meantime, if you can help us support the kids through your donations of any kind, through your you maybe your card ministry or your prayer ministry, we'd appreciate that. Um, and you know, we, again, we've got the holidays coming up, and we hopefully maybe you could. Um, adopt one of our cottages or some of our kids and make sure that their Christmas list is filled. Please keep in touch. We'll, we'll keep in touch with you. And I hope you have blessed holidays as well uh, from us to you. As I said, um, Abby was not able to be here, but those are my numbers and how to contact me. And I look forward to continuing to remain in contact with all of you and to continue to work with you. Pam has invited me after the service to greet you in the back. And I have some additional giveaways and goodies because everyone loves those. And um, I look forward to continuing to partner with you and work with you as we try to help kiddos understand that they are beloved. Um, this is a message that many of these youth have never heard. The folks that should have cared for them unconditionally have not. 
And so we stand in front of them and we do that. Um, I have had <clears throat> the opportunity in my 23 years to see children move through our programs that I have had the joy of having a young man, I'll call him Tom, it's not his real name. When I first worked with him, he literally did not know how to eat with a fork. He literally did not know how to eat at a table. And his state social worker said, don't bother. He'll be gone in six months. We worked with him for three years. He graduated high school. I got the joy to watch him walk across the stage and get that diploma. And I can tell you, in that joy and every step he took across that stage, I felt all of the pain and the suffering in the days that we spent wrestling around trying to get him where he was. And then about seven years after he left us, he came back and asked to see me because he wanted to introduce me to his daughter. And he knew all of her favorite toys and the best way to diaper her and all of these things that parents do. And I said, Tom, where did you learn that? And he said, from you and from everybody else who taught me how to love. So I invite you to come alongside of us and help us to love these kids. Help them to know unconditional love that they deserve, as do we all. Blessings and thank you for letting me be with you. I'll invite Lori to come up now. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lori Yes Sychek, and when I heard Samantha on Pam's Ramblings a couple of weeks ago, I put out on Facebook, um, I wonder if we can do anything, and then I volunteered to head up a project. <laughs> so um, after, <laughs> after Stacy took um, the idea to the uh, Ministry Council, uh, we have decided to move forward with a project. And as you heard Sam say, um, there are a number of cottages at uh, the facility, 15 in fact, three girls' cottages and 12 boys. Ages range from seven to 19. And uh, what we thought we could do is sponsor at least one cottage with gift card donations for those hard to buy teenagers. Um, our goal would be to try to collect 20 $25 target gift cards in the next couple of weeks. Um, there are several ways that you could help out with this. One is to buy a target gift card, bring it to church the next couple of Sundays, either drop it in the offering plate or give it to me. Um, you could actually purchase gift cards online. I was online last night and they said that they could um, get gift cards shipped out to your address by the second and to make it really easy you could have the cards just sent straight here to church. Thirdly, if you give cash or check and, and um, put in the memo line Christmas outreach, I'll go to Target for you and buy the gift cards and so that we can um, have a nice collection. We're gonna try to have our collection done by Sunday, December 5th, so that I can get the donations to uh, the facility um, by the 8th, so then they, they can plan how they're gonna use the cards. Um, I'll post an announcement on Facebook this afternoon with all the details that I've just uh, covered, including my email address. So if you have any questions, um, just contact me through email. Again, I'll be here the next couple of Sundays as well to help out with the collection. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
great that we have all of these opportunities to be that church, to be those people uh, with what uh, Sam just shared with us and the, the wonderful opportunities that, that we have to be able to give and Lori stepping up to manage this project, what Rita shared with us this morning and the ways that we can be a global impact even from this little place this tiny footprint in the world we have a chance to do all of that and i just think it is so so beautiful and it moves me and you know something else that we get to do every sunday about this time is we get to open our arms up really more figurative figuratively than literally these days but we get to open our arms up and say we want to be your uh we want to be your partner in this world by helping you take on your burdens. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? About how we take on each other's burdens and we love on each other sometimes just by saying, I'm thinking about you. So this morning, uh, we take the time every Sunday morning to celebrate the joys of this past week and to join each other in prayer for the needs of our church family and our community. Daniel is keeping an eye on social media and on Facebook, and he's going to be sharing some of those that folks have shared with us online this morning. And if you're watching, and I understand there's about a 90-second delay from the time I say a word to the time you see it on Facebook and social media. So we'll try to keep that in mind. But if you have a need this morning, then you can share it on our Facebook page, and Daniel's keeping an eye on, on that. And we also asked you this morning to share on our Facebook page. Uh, so I wonder if there's anyone here in the house this morning, if you have a joy or a concern you'd like to share with your church family. Lynn. I have joy, and the joy has come from your sharing and support over the last six months during the process of my sister's illness. Your support has made a huge difference to me, and my sister is so touched by your heart. Beautiful. Thank you, Lynn. How beautiful. How beautiful. Chris. Uh, a couple things. Um, this is very fitting. So this past week, uh, I was approved as a foster care recruiter and trainer. Um, so if you have ever thought about being a foster parent and you'd like more information on that process, uh, you can send me a message or check out with me after church, and I'm happy to talk to you about that. Um, also, I have a student um, at UK, she's an undergraduate at UK, whose mother was just diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, and it's it's been really hard news for the family to get, and we're working on getting her um, some emotional and, and mental health support. Uh, so pray for that student and her mother and their family. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Just want to let everybody know how blessed I am to have been sharing my life with this woman mm -hmm. next to me for the past 36 years. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> happy 36 years, or mostly happy 36 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. Absolutely, and I know Stephen reminds us often, pretty much every Sunday, and Steve, uh, Stephen, I'll say this for you, unless you want to say it, but he always reminds us to remember those who are uh, in the midst of recovery, beginning recovery somewhere along the line in recovery, and those who uh, find themselves without a home, especially moving into this time of the year. Not only is the weather getting colder, but there are a lot of 
There are a lot of families who are wondering where their loved ones are. Uh, and so let's pray for them and those who are who always seem to step up even more this time of year as we move into the holidays to help serve the homeless community and those who are in recovery and addiction. So let's pray for, let's pray for all of them. Um, yeah, James. Absolutely. Pray for James who's having surgery tomorrow. Yes. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. Let's pray for that family. I talked with uh, Mama Jean on the way out the door this past Sunday, and she had fallen uh, and injured her foot uh, and is just kind of moving slow and said it's hard to move around on this. So let's pray for Mama Jean uh, this morning too. Anyone else? Daniel, what are folks saying online? Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Kenny, uh, Paula Smith has asked for prayers for unity and recovery folks. Um, Darling Sellers Wheaton has asked for prayers for those struggling during Thanksgiving. Um, Karen and Liz have asked for prayer. Um, <clears throat> that's what I'm seeing on a different post. Okay, thank you, Tammy, for for looking at those. Cook and his his family, his mama's family. Certainly. Yes, go ahead, Chris. Absolutely. Thank you for the update, Chris, and we will pray. Let's bow our heads. God, we know this morning that not one single thing that's been mentioned in this place, not one single thing that's mentioned that's been mentioned online has caught you by surprise. We believe that you're fully aware, and we believe that you are fully capable, God, of helping us deal with our needs to provide the love and the courage and the comfort, your spirit, in those places where we need you most. God, that's why we call on you. That's why we believe in prayer. That's where our faith comes in. And God, we also believe that even in those moments where it seems all of those things are overwhelming and we don't know how to deal with them and it, we do feel like we're being defeated and we do feel like we're being overwhelmed, we still can trust in you. So God, this morning we bring all of these things, all of this list, every one of them that's special, every one of them unique in their need, unique in their want. We bring them all to you, God, trusting you to always do what's right. Comfort us, strengthen us. Grant traveling mercies, God, for those who are moving around over the next several days. Be in hospital rooms with the healthcare professionals and with the patients and with their families and with the staff. God, be with our educators and be with our first responders and be with our government leaders and be with our religious leaders and be with those who step in to help. God, be with those who just get up every day and day in and day out, they do the deed. God, we pray that your spirit would rest in this place and rest on all of these needs. God, we trust you. We believe and we ask all of these things in your beautiful, precious name. And all who believed and agreed said, Amen.
like I don't need to preach today because the spirit has already been here. The scripture I'm reading this morning is really more of a prayer. It's a prayer that anybody who has ever loved people in a church could pray. So I'm going to ask you this morning to hear this scripture in a prayerful mode. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Remember those you love, those who've touched you. I kneel in prayer to God from whom all beings in heaven and on earth receive their life. God is wonderful and glorious. I pray that God's spirit will make us become strong followers and that Christ will live in our hearts because of our faith. Stand firm and be deeply rooted in love. I pray that we, along with all of humanity, will understand that God's love is so wide and so long and so high and so deep. I want us all to know about Christ's love. Although it is too wonderful to be measured or fathomed, but when we do our lives and allow God's love to fill us up with all that God is, something happens. I pray that Christ Jesus and the church will forever bring praise to God. For because the divine power is at work in us, we, Bluegrass United Church of Christ, can do far more than we ever dare to ask or even imagine. May that always be our prayer here. When the elders of this church found out that the University of Kentucky was going to purchase Sandra's Chapel, where we were worshiping, we began to pray about what we were going to do. Long story short, Marsha brought the elders here to this property to take a walk around and take a go see to even start to think about what it might be like if we were to pull up our roots and be transplanted on the other side of town. Tour day one, we get here. The grass is up to the windows. The inside is a mess. The water has been turned off. All symptom, symptoms and symbols of the brokenness of a church who's had their closed church doors closed. I thought, hmm, as Miss Hattie would say. <laughs> I walked around all by myself that day around the perimeter. Daniel, you remember it, I bet. Um, I was all the while looking for snakes that might step out and grab me. But as I walked, I prayed. I began to enter that prayerful cadence that happens when you're really seeking the Spirit's guidance. I began to walk, and I listened. And I had one of those good old encounters of the God kind right there in the weeds on Don Anna Drive. You see, as I walked, I felt the surge of the Spirit rise up inside my body. It felt like little pieces of electricity just running through me. And I felt the power of the holy in a strong and powerful way. As I walked, I began to dream. And as I dreamed, I hoped. I pray that whoever walked onto this land, into this parking lot, whoever slept on the porches or under the trees, would come to know the love of a God that is deep and wide and high and long, and I began to wonder if something like that might be possible here. Could this be the place where drag queens and church gypsies and music makers and artists and dreamers and misfits and rebels might join with the remnants of a little black conservative church that had gone under? And could we do church together? Sounded intriguing to me. As far as I was concerned, the traditional churches I'd attended didn't quite meet up to what I'd read church ought to be. 
they were places where I had had my spirit injured. Yeah. And they had made me question whether communities of faith were worth investing my energy into. Yeah. So I stood there and I wondered, do we dare give God a chance? Could the rem remnants of a conservative elderly black community and an out-of-the-box white folks church <laughs> really dare to risk coming together in spite of what we thought our differences were? And could we trust that God could lead us? I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> that was not a God moment right there. <laughs> that was the Pam Lee Miller skeptic moment. I felt intuitively that we were to move here. When you feel those spirit bumps and spirit, spirit surges going through you, I'm going to tell you, you need to pay attention. Because yeah. God's trying to tell you something. I could feel myself even tearing up as I walked. You see, the power of God was already strong and at work here. And I could feel it. I wanted to see and believe in this little experiment we call church and what it might look like if we really tried. And I thank God that the elders decided to join with Marcia in our dream of making a place where love grew strong and big and hard and people could feel it when they walked through the doors. And here we sit. 500 Don Anna Drive. That was our history. You ever wonder what God's got in store for us next? Sometimes it scares me. Kenny and I believe we're on our way to be in that church that he spoke about last Sunday. I know it's the dream for all of us in this place. But better yet, the power of God is real, and I certainly don't understand it all, but I've learned to trust it. I trust the power of something so much bigger than me that is experienced in and with each one of you, mingled with God, love, and the Spirit. I trust that. And I can't even begin to fathom what God might have in store for this little corner of the world. Can't even begin to imagine what might happen after a pandemic even. Throughout the history of this little church, people have come and landed. People who've been rejected or told that they're not good enough or smart enough or that there's something wrong with them because they wore the wrong clothing or used a pronoun that others didn't understand. And even weird radicals like me came and sat, and there's always been room for one more. Yeah. You know, some folks come and they stay for a long time. Sometimes they leave because they get what they need right at that moment. I have loved and been loved and been changed by every person who's ever walked through this door, for they've showed me a different image of God and made me look at the world through different lenses. I still have a lot to learn. And when folks pull up and leave, pull up their roots from ours, and they go to another place to get their needs met, well, it hurts us a little bit, doesn't it? But you know what? The fact that they walk through these doors and they love with us a little bit, they're always a part of us. They're always our family. Why? Because something special happens in this little place. Love grows. Love grows, and better yet, resurrection happens in this place. Yeah. I have experienced it, and I've had the joy of watching all of you resurrect as well. That's big stuff these days in a church. Yeah. Well, I came and I sat. I didn't want to get to know any of you. You've heard me say that a lot. And I sure didn't need your love because I wasn't sure love was real in a church. But the power of God did something far bigger than I can even fathom or dream as I sat and rested on that back row. 
You see, your love started to seep into me and around me. And God's bomb began to work at healing me from the pain that churches had caused me. The next thing I knew, I could feel the chains that the churches had wrapped around me begin to unlock and fall at the wayside. Yeah. I began to feel like I could breathe again. I began to believe that God just might find a way for me to believe in church again. One day, I was sitting in the back of the church and the fifth verse of one of them songs started, and I just wanted it to end. And before I knew it, in my t-shirts and shorts that probably didn't match, and my hair standing straight up, because you know when I get nervous, I run my fingers through my hair, I left the pew and I walked down Sanders Chapel's aisle and I asked to join this little church. That was big stuff. You see, your love fertilized my dormant spirit. And you hugged me. And you helped me to let go of the embedded remnant of bad theology, telling me that I was not worthy of God's love. You know what happened? God resurrected my spirit, and it keeps happening over and over and over for me. Because the power of God is at work in this place. Do you believe it? Yes. It is life-giving and life-affirming. It re resurrects us to better versions of ourself. And that's all I'm going to say about this series. This series is about stewardship. It's about discerning whether you're able to give your support to the church financially or to offer your gifts to help us out. All I'm going to say about that is this, because I believe the Spirit guides each one of us. I don't need to beg you, because if you've been changed by this little place, if you've been loved back to health in this little place, if you've had folks hold you up and utter your name in prayer here, I don't need to tell you how badly other folks who've not walked through this door might need us. There's a lot of folks out there hurting that needs us. You see, the power of the divine is more than we can imagine, more than we could ever dream of. And I find that really exciting in all kinds of ways because it's full of God's creative possibility and energy. God's creative energy and possibility. You know, I've watched many of you have your own resurrections over time. I've watched the power of God fuel them. I've seen the immersion of God's love, and I've watched spiritual roots begin to seep down into this soil and grow deep, deep roots. That love and that rootedness allows us to be transmitters of God love into a world that is hurting. I mean, that's what we're all about, isn't it? To make a difference, to create the kingdom. I pray that we stay open to the spirit here at Bluegrass. Yes. That our hearts are tender and we're touched by pain that our eyes see the hurting in, in the world and that people who think they are unlovable come to know there is something in us that they want. That's how I got to this church, you know. I'd been hospitalized because of having suicidal thoughts. When I got out, I saw my friend Beth Snyder at work and she was giddy. <laughs> I said to her, you look different. I thought she had a new girlfriend. <laughs> you carry yourself different, I said. And she said, well, I found this little church. And there's something happening to me. I found this little church. Something's happening to me. 
why don't you come and see? A few Sundays later, right as the service was about to start, I snuck in and sat down beside Beth Snyder. Before the service even started, I could feel God's power trying to get into my brokenness and I began to weep. And I wasn't weeping because I was sad, I was weeping because God was touching me. Yeah. I watched folks and I saw all of you loving up on each other. And I felt a little spark of hope. Because the love in that room was God love. And it was flowing out of people and, and y'all seemed really authentic, which was new in a church for me. You weren't hiding who you were. Let me tell you, I fought like hell to not let any of you get in. <laughs> but the love of God flowing from your eyes into my mind, your smiles, your hug, your everything. Well, that God love snuck in and changed me too. And suddenly I found myself saying, I found this little church. I found this little church. Yeah. Why don't you come? Why don't you come and see what it's about? Next thing I knew, God's power infused me with courage to step out, to step into a calling I had run from for a long time. And now I am blessed to get to co-lead this little church with Kenny. Resurrection happens. You don't believe it, I'm proof of it. The power of God is in this place. It's stronger than we dare to even imagine. That should scare all of us. Because who know what, knows what God's going to use us for. God's power is bigger and stronger and longer and wider than anything we dare to dream or imagine. What I know church for sure is this. I want us all to grow together. All of us. I want our roots to be deep in love with the grounding of a God that resurrects us over and over and over again. I want to be here at Bluegrass in a place that is life-giving and full of light. And I want all of you to push me to the edge of my growth. Do it with love, though. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can be better and better and better every day. And I want to do the same for you all. Gosh, I love all of you so much. And I know Kenny loves you so much. But you know what? I know you love me the same because I can feel it. I used to not be able to feel it. And I'm thankful for that. But the best part of our story is this. God loves us. And there is a power greater than we dare to imagine all around us. So let's channel our love, our God love, so that we can be that church that Kenny talked about last week because we got some bridges of love yes. that need to be built. Yes. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Pam. What a beautiful word. More than we can dare imagine. Wow. I feel like we've been kind of nudged along these last handful of weeks, or at least maybe we've just been reminded these last handful of weeks who we are and what our mission is and who God has called us to be. And we are sensing the, some real excitement. Uh, and I, I love it. Last Sunday, Stacy sent a text to both Pam and I, and she said, I just really am sensing beautiful things and wonderful things happening among our little church family and we're sensing it too and we're feeling it too and lord knows we're praying hard for it and uh, you know i'm a lot like uh, the apostle paul who i have a love-hate relationship with 
um, you know, on a lot of things. Uh, but he did say, when I think of you, I pray for you. Um, and I like that a whole lot better than him saying, I pray for you every day, because I know sometimes he might have said it, but didn't mean it, <laughs> you know. But I do pray for so many of you when I see your faces or I'm scrolling through social media and Facebook. Deb, did I see today's your birthday? Today? Happy birthday to you. Uh, and if somebody else here, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you too. I just happened to see uh, on Facebook. How many of you got one of these, the communion cups? If you didn't get one on your way in, if you'll slip your hand up, we'll have someone uh, bring one to you. Keith will take care of that for you. We want to make sure everybody has one of these. You know, um, we didn't do communion every Sunday at the church I grew up in. We did it about four times a year, about once a quarter, and we would usually do communion along with a foot washing. Uh, and if you've ever been to one of those foot washings, then you know that that can be uh, an interesting moment. Uh, <laughs> And, and, or not. And in the very conservative church that I grew up in, interestingly enough, they would put the women on one side of the church and they would put the men on the other side of the church. And truth is, that never bothered me. <laughs> uh, for what are probably obvious reasons. <laughs> never bothered me at all. But when we did do communion, it was always a very special moment. And I know that all of us would love to be able to break that bread together again. Uh, we would love to be able to pass those plates through the congregation and everyone just take their piece and take their cup and everything. But right now, we feel like this is the best way to do it. We feel like this is the safe way to do it and, and the right way to do it. And it reminds me, you know, I look at this and I think, what would Jesus have thought, <laughs> you know, uh, when it came to this? And it reminded me one time of back in my music career, we would travel around to different uh, music stores and Christian bookstores and we would do these things called in-persons where you would just go and you would sit at a table and you'd sign autographs and you'd do Q&As and I remember one time we were somewhere over in North Carolina and there was this beautiful sweet older lady when we were doing the Q&A she spoke up and she said Kenny I understand that you're a, a preacher and I said yes ma'am and she said well I've got a question about the Bible she said, it just kind of bothers me anymore when I see these youngsters coming into church and they're wearing their blue jeans and their t-shirts and things like that, and I feel like they're disrespecting the church house. And she said, I want to know, what do you think Jesus would think about that? Do you think that was wrong? Do you think Jesus would think that that, uh, that was wrong? And she said, I just think it's, it's, it's wrong in so many ways. And I sat there and I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, you know what? She said, her question was, do you think Jesus would have worn blue jeans to church? And so I said, well, ma'am, truth is, no, I don't. I don't think he would have, but also I don't think he flipped a light switch <laughs> and sat in the electricity because it just wasn't a thing then. And that's kind of the way we are with these communion cups. This probably was, well, this wasn't a thing then, but this is the way we're doing it now. So you'll pardon me when I say that Jesus and his disciples and the others were in a room together. And Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he passed it around the room and he said, take and eat and when you do, remember me and remember the gift of life that I give to you. Remember my body that's given for you. And then he took the cup and he raised it and he blessed it and he passed it around the room and he said, take and drink. And when you do, remember the gift that I give to you and the spirit that I leave with you. And always remember that you'll never, ever, ever be alone. That God will always be with you wherever you go. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to do it the way we do it these days and just peel that little top off the top of that cup and receive the bread. It's not the best bread. <laughs> And then peel that top back a little further and take the juice, the cup. Eat, drink, and remember. Let's pause for a moment to meditate.
Thank you, Brenda. That's beautiful. Today we're concluding our series on stewardship. Thank you for indulging us. Thank you, Keith. Thank you for indulging us. Um, as we've spoken about this the last handful of weeks, it's important to the life of our church. We always say that we worship through giving, and there are so many ways to do that. And the last handful of weeks, we've focused more on how we can support the church financially. And it is very important. But I promise you, we're not going to bug you about it all the time. I promise you that. Uh, we did have some folks, though, who asked about a pledge form that they would be able to complete and turn in. And we appreciate that and understand that. So uh, we do have some forms that are available on the table on the way out just next to the tech booth. There's some forms back there. If you would like to fill out one of these forms, uh, you can do that and you can uh, put it in the offering plate next Sunday or you can leave it back there uh, at the tech booth. Uh, but we want to let you know that we do have these forms that are available. We also want to remind you, Stacy mentioned to us uh, last week a wonderful opportunity with our, uh, our online church directory is called Simple Church. And sometimes I don't think it should be called Simple Church. Sometimes I think it should be called Convoluted Mess. <laughs> because it's not always easy to, to, to get through. But it's what we have right now. Uh, and there are a lot, of, it does have a lot of wonderful features and it's a great way for all of us to stay connected and to know how to get in touch with one another. And something that is very special right now is through Simple Church, if you sign up as a regular, so that it's an automatically given uh, uh, each month or each week or how often you want to do it, right now they are matching all of our regular giving Sign up, Stacy. I'm not saying that very well at all, but up to it's $50, up to fifty dollars for each reoccurring gift that they can set up by individual up to a thousand dollars. Super. So if we can have folks who who uh, sign up up to, and it accumulates up to that thousand dollars, then they will match that with a gift to our church for a thousand dollars. Boy, I wish I'd said that a lot easier. Um, and I apologize if you're confused. You can see Stacy if you need more information, uh, and uh, she can tell you more about it. But there are also a lot of other ways that you can give and support the church. We have a lot of folks who just love to place their offerings uh, in the plate each Sunday morning. We have folks who use the different apps. You can see there's three different apps that you can use. Uh, you can go on our website. If you go to that web address, bluegrasschurch.org give, that actually takes you to the Simple Church uh, giving portal and so you can do it that way and we sincerely do appreciate the way you give and you support the church and uh, not only that way but in other ways. Stacy. Thank you. Yeah so if you're interested in and learning how to do that, you can stay after church, and Stacy will help you set up those recurring gifts. And if you're watching online and you need some help with that, you can also reach out to us and let us know, and we'll get back with you. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you through our giving and through our gifts. We pray that you would take these things and send them out to do the thing you, uh, you sent them to do. In your name we pray. Amen.
thank all of you for coming this morning. We want to thank Brenda Gardner on the piano and Chris Pritchard leading our singing this morning. Barry and Keith, thank you for always being here extra early on Sunday mornings and making sure everything is ready to go and for receiving our offerings. Dale Hamilton and Mason Bishop and Timmy Smallwood are in the tech booth this morning. We appreciate them. And uh, don't forget Rita will be in the fellowship hall uh, when the service is over this morning. And I want to thank all of you. Yesterday I came to the church to dig in the animals that are in the fellowship hall. But as I came, there were people out there filling up buckets and dumping rocks on our labyrinth. So I want to thank all of you who worked so hard this week. Yeah. Seth is going to be posting again. We need more backs and more bodies uh, so that we can get our labyrinth finished. Yes, thank so all, thank of, you all of you. And thank you, Seth, for helping to lead that effort all along. We appreciate it getting close. We're looking forward to We We have a couple of dates in, in uh, lead on the calendar right now, not necessarily in the ink when we're going to be able to announce when we'll be dedicating the labyrinth. And we're looking forward to having uh, Marsha and Brenda come back to be with us for a very special service when we're able uh, to do that. Friends, we love being a part of your life and we love that you're a part of the life of our church. If you're watching this morning and you'd love to be a part of this church family, we would love to have you. All you need to do is just reach out to Pam or myself and we'll be happy to talk to you about that. If you're here with us this morning and you'd love to be a part of our church family, you can let Pam and I know on the way out the door or if you feel like you just wanna come forward while we sing this closing hymn, then you're welcome to do it that way too. We love being a part of one another and being a part of that church together. Let's sing our closing song. This is a song that I'm not super familiar with, but Pam, you found this song and it fits so well. It fits so well. Let's sing. Rooted and grounded in love. As we depart, we have been rooted yeah. and we're grounded in a love of God that is real and deep and wide and high. So pull it in and take it out. May God's power protect us. May God's presence surround us. May God's love enfold us over and over again for wherever we are. God is there and may we transmit that God love. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
rest. <laughs>